When a patient develops a partial ulcer, the length of stay is extended and the overall cost of care is increased. Prevention includes special beds, mattresses, good hygiene, good nutrition, adequate hydration, and impeccable nursing care. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services implemented a policy whereby hospitals no longer receive additional reimbursement for care related to eight conditions, including stage 3 and stage 4 partial ulcers that occur during the hospitalization. In assessing a patient's risk factor for partial ulcers, nurses can help reduce hospital costs and costs to patients for the incurment of pressure ulcers. When assessing a patient at risk for pressure ulcers, nurses assess sensory perception, moisture, activity, mobility, nutrition, and the presence of friction or shear friction. In general, scores under 18 require nursing interventions to prevent Pressure ulcer, pressure ulcer formation. Factors influencing pressure ulcer formation and wound healing include nutrition, tissue perfusion, infection, age, and psychosocial impact of wounds. For maintenance of skin and wound healing, patients need at least 1,500 kilocalories per day at times, enteral or parenteral nutrition may be needed. Tissue perfusion occurs when tissue oxygenation fuels cellular function. Patients who are in shock or who are diagnosed with diabetes are at risk for poor tissue perfusion. Wound infection prolongs the inflammatory phase, delays collagen synthesis, and prevents epithelialization of the tissue. Signs of wound infection include pus, change in odor, volume, or redness of the tissue, fever, and pain. Increased age affects all phases of wound healing. A decrease in functioning of macrophages leads to a delayed inflammatory response, delayed collagen synthesis, and slower epithelialization process. A patient's body image can cause... can... A patient's body image changes caused by a wound, and may lead to problems with self-concept. Factors that influence the patient's perception of the wound include presence of scars, drainage, odor from the wound, and temporary or permanent prosthetic devices. Baseline assessments are important data that indicates the potential risk for impaired skin integrity as well as any risk for pressure ulcer development. The benefit of predictive instruments such as the Braden scale is improved early detection by nurses of patients at greatest risk for underlying pressure ulcer development. Assessment includes documenting the level of mobility and the potential effects of impaired mobility on the skin. Contextual exposure of the skin to body fluids increases a patient's risk for skin breakdown and pressure ulcer formation. Malnutrition is a risk factor for pressure ulcer development, and maintaining adequate pain control and pain comfort increases the patient's willingness and ability to increase mobility, which in turn reduces pressure ulcer risk.